live stream, I'd like to have make sure everybody Good evening, everybody. Wait. Good evening. Hello. It's a pleasure to see everyone here. Everyone here tonight, even if we're small, we're mighty, and we're not quarantined. So that's a bonus. All right. At this time, I will ask that you take out your hymn books and please stand if you're able as we sing our chorus of the month, our chorus of the week, hymn number five hundred nine. Please stand if you're able as we sing hymn number five hundred nine, our chorus of the week. Jesus, oh how sweet the name. Jesus, every day the same. Jesus, let all saints proclaim. It's what they praise forever. Amen. Okay, now for our next hymn, hymn number 488. 488. Uh, uh, Oh yes, I am on Sunday night, but 78. Hymn number 78. Thank you. Sorry about that. I'm sorry. 78. Hymn number 78. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Hymn number 78. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing it, mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us the place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. Well, sing and shout the victory. Cross to while we walk the pilgrim pathway. Clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Verse 4. Come, what do the brides before us? Soon his beauty will behold. Soon the holy gates will open. We shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Amen. It is time for a welcome and prayer by Pastor Storm. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what, we're under the 10. We're doing great. Amen. Amen. And uh, it's good to have everybody here tonight. I'll tell you what, we're going to have a good night tonight. And uh, I'll tell you what, I uh, feel bad.
for those who can't be with us. I mean, they just cannot because of physical uh, difficulty and stuff. One is Dana, hi Dana, um, hi Mr. Storm. And uh, so, um, but we've got others that uh, are away from us. Uh, uh, Joanne Tremble uh, is another one that uh, cannot be with us. Uh, so, uh, you know, we just need to take and pray for each and every one that can't be here. But those of you who are here, it's good to have you. And uh, so let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father, thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for the opportunity of having church. Not only are we having church tonight, Lord, but we're going to be lifting up our voices to you in prayer. Father, there's no greater night of the week than Wednesday night when we can come to church and we can lift up our voices in prayer. Father, we just thank you so much for this church. We thank you for those who come so faithfully. We pray now that you'll guide and direct everything that's said and done here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Okay. And now we have time for two requests. Two we Yes. Okay. No handshaking. We have time, but we have time for two requests. Yes, sir. What? 189. Wait, no, he requested, wait, he, yeah, 189 or 89? Wait. If you raise your hand neck after him, yes. 89. So, so I was like, it's the rule that you have to raise your hand or just shout it first. Raise your hand or shout first. Yeah, raise your hand or shout. Hymn number 89 is our first request for tonight. 89, we'll sing all three verses. I'm satisfied with just a cottage we love. A little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the earth will shine, I want a gold one, that silver line. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. In that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder, they'll never more wander. But walk the streets that appear as cold Was you, the loved and tempted Tormented and tested And like the prophet, my pillow was stone And though I find him no permanent dwelling I know he'll give me a mess of my home I've got a mansion just over the hill in that bright land where we'll never grow old And someday under we'll never more wander But walk the streets that appear as cold Mostly, don't think me poor Deserted or lonely I'm not discouraged I'm heaven bound I'm just a pilgrim In such a city I want a mansion, a hop and a crown. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday under, we'll never more wander, but walk the streets that up your skulls. Amen. Yes, ma'am. 249 is our second and last request tonight. Hymn number 240. 249. I know this one. Okay. Hymn number 249 is our second and last request tonight. We'll sing all three verses. 249. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. Half died, wandered in darkness away. Jesus, my Savior, I met. How would a tender, compassionate friend came as the need of my heart? Shadows dispelling, which joy I am telling, he made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul, filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, made me whole, my sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven 
and came down and play filled my soul, filled my soul most too. Born of the Spirit with life from above into God's family divine. Justified fully through Calvary's love, oh, what a standing is mine. And the transaction so quickly was made when as a sinner I came. Took of the offer of grace he did proper, he saved me, oh, praises to your name. Heaven came down and play filled my soul, filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, made me whole. My sins were washed away, and my night was done today. Heaven came down and play filled my soul, filled my soul, was free. Now I've a hope that will surely endure after the passing of time. I have a future in heaven for sure, then those mansions of life. And it's because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believe. Riches eternal and blessings supernal from his precious hand I receive. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul, filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, made me whole. My sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul, filled my soul. Heaven came down. Filled my soul. <coughs> hey, man. It's fine, I do that all the time. <coughs> uh, it would be a rebaptism, though. Oh, I'm a Baptist. Yeah, I did. I've never seen that ever happen before. You might baptize yourself. You'll see a lot of uh, strange things with me here. Okay. So now it is yes, <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. Praise God. Does anyone else have a phrase they'd like to share? Yes, sir. So. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise God for that. It's all to me. Sounds exciting. Uh, yes. Uh, do you have your hand up? What? Oh, thank you. Praise God. Yeah. Does anyone else have a phrase they'd like to share? Yeah. Man, it's always great. It's always great to hear. Good thinking. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise God. It's all me. It's a blessing, especially right now with basically everything being sold out. So praise God indeed for that. But does anyone else have a phrase they'd like to share? Yes, sir. Amen. Praise God. Does anyone else have a phrase they'd like to hear? If not, then at this time we'll have announcements by Pastor Storm. Uh, can I help you? Yeah. Uh, right here. Thank you. 
All right. We have a lot of changes in the announcements, an awful lot. And uh, due to the um, um, Corolla, bi Corolla uh, virus, um, no, I, you know, just kidding, just kidding, okay. I'm just, everybody going, what do you mean, can't you say it? No, okay. <laughs> Coronavirus, okay. Everybody got, everybody looked at me real funny when I called it Corolla the other day, you know, so anyway. But we've got um, a lot of changes that are going to be made. Number one is this, this coming Sunday, we will not be having Sunday school. We will not have Sunday school at 9 o'clock. We will have Sunday morning worship at 10 o'clock, and we will have Sunday evening service at 5. Um, we will not have any Sunday school, but uh, coming up on this coming Saturday, there was supposed to be ladies' fellowship at my house, 11 o'clock. That has to be postponed. We're not going to have the shower this weekend, um, so you guys are going to have to take your own shower at home. Um, <clears throat> but... Um, uh, What's that? All by yourself? Yeah, all by yourself, yep. Group, group showers aren't allowed. Anyway, um, men's fellowship. If you want to go shooting, um, I'm going shooting myself. And I know there are a couple other guys got some new guns they want to try out. And uh, so we're going to be uh, probably going down to the farm because um, we want to do a little long-range uh, shooting. So um, if... You, uh, why don't you, let's do it this way. If you want to go shooting, meet me at my house. Meet at my house at 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay? 8 o'clock Saturday in the morning at my house, and we'll leave from there and head down there. Because um, I'm going to take the trailer along, and we'll um, uh, take the, uh, all the targets they've got in the trailer, and, and we'll take the, um, uh, the new shooting bench I bought. I got a shooting bench, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so that's going to be at 8 o'clock on Saturday morning. If you'd like to go, that's fine. <coughs> um, Saturday night, movie, movie night has been canceled. Um, the reason we're canceling all this is because of the virus. And I had a, uh, uh, a webinar yesterday. Um, I was on the computer uh, just about all day yesterday uh, with um, the uh, Arizona Education Association. Uh, because uh, we are under um, emergency, uh, not only na uh, federal, but also state, that means that our private school now is under the arm of the Arizona Education Board, which, or we have to go by the same rules they do now uh, while we're under the state of emergency, which means that um, we have, if they're off school, we're off school. Uh, and so on and so forth. But um, <clears throat> I also was on a webinar yesterday with the um, um, uh, NCLL. That's, believe it or not, that's our, our law group with Dr. Um, David Gibbs III. And uh, he had uh, a webinar yesterday, and I was on there with him, and there was about um, 500 other uh, uh, pastors from around the United States that were on there with him. And um, uh, we could ask questions and he'd answer them and so on and so forth. And one of the things he said was this. He said, if you have any extracurricular activities, um, youth activities, if you're having a, um, a, uh, a revival, uh, cancel it. If you're having a missions conference, cancel it. If you're having anything that would draw in a lot of people, cancel it. Um, if you're having... Uh, uh, like um, ladies' fellowship or a special Bible study or something like that, cancel it. He said, if you're in a state that um, is not, would be not like under martial law like they are in California and like they are in New York and Wisconsin and some other states, and they say that you, you know, you only have, you know, it's, it's a suggestion more than you cannot do it type thing or you'll get fined. Uh, then you can have church, but keep it short and keep people spread out. And uh, so uh, that's mainly what we're doing here tonight. Um, so movie night is going to be canceled. Uh, Tug uh, the 27th is going to be canceled. Uh, we will have trap and skeet practice on the 28th. Uh, we, um, I talked to 
um, the, um, the chairman of the Scholastic Trap and Clay uh, Proficiency, and this is what they said. They said, as long as you do not have a big group in a room, um, he says, when you do your safety meetings, do them out on the line. Keep everybody far enough apart. And he says, once they're out on the line, hey, guess what? They're a long ways apart. They're not around each other. And so they're uh, going to be continuing to go on with that. And um, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens with the Commissioner's Cup and things that way. Um, <coughs> we're, uh, we will have Noisy Bucket on the 29th. I just thought I'd give you that one. We'll, we will have that. And then uh, um, coming up on March, um, um, <laughs> March 30th we, is a question mark yet on school. Um, it has been yesterday in the webinar they were talk, they asked how long that they felt this was going to go on and uh, what the, um, the um, national uh, health is trying to do is trying to get the curve. There's a curve that this thing has. And when it starts, it goes way up, spikes, and then comes back down again. And what they're trying to do is flatten that curve out. It's going to be longer, but um, it's going to be less severe. And that's why they don't want anybody around anybody. And uh, so <coughs> um, what they're looking at is if they can do that, um, there is a possibility that we may have to be out of school another four weeks after that. So that would mean that we'd be out six weeks and we'd be coming back in and we would only have two weeks of school left <laughs> for the end of the year. So uh, Nancy and I have been talking uh, in depth about what we're going to do. And uh, uh, what's gonna happen is, and ACE called me Monday and they wanted to know what we were gonna do when we came back in. I gave them a lay down of exactly how we're gonna do it. And so uh, yesterday I got an email from uh, ACE and everything I told them on Monday was exactly like I told Brother Ballinger on Monday, was on his email of how school should operate while they're in session. I, everything, it was right down just perfect, just exactly what I told him. And uh, so I was happy to see that somebody listens to me once in a while. But uh, April the 1st, then we're going to have a uh, question and answer. Um, the 4th, uh, we're going to play it by ear. Um, if they've lifted the band, we'll have men's fellowship. Uh, tug on the 10th. 11th will be trap and skeet. The uh, 12th will be um, uh, our sunrise service at 7 o'clock. We'll have that anyway for Easter. We'll have our breakfast at nine, 8 o'clock, and we'll have um, our um, uh, Easter service on the 12th. And then, um, let's see, Commissioner's Cup is on the 18th. The 24th is Tug. The 25th is uh, Men and Ladies Fellowship. And the 25th is uh, Movie Night. And then the 26th will be Noisy Bucket. So um, just I want everybody to be real vigilant watch this the church's web, uh, uh, site um, on Facebook because I will be posting everything on Facebook uh, for changes uh, if there are any more changes and things like that and we'll try to get the word out to everybody as quickly as we can on whether or not we're going to uh, be having uh, services and, and things like that so um, <clears throat> As I said, you know, there's going to be some changes that we're going to have to make, and uh, everybody is in the same boat with this thing. Um, you know, I, I feel bad for the churches that aren't having church tonight. Uh, and, I mean, a lot of these churches that aren't having church have had church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, forever. And uh, now tonight, first night, they've had it closed down. And um, um, I saw a uh, tweet from... Um, Brother Chapel over at Lancaster, they're down. I mean, can you imagine having a church that has 3,000 people? They have over uh, 1,800 on Wednesday night. And you have to shut it down? I mean, shut everything down. They had to shut everything. The college is shut down. Everything is totally 100% shut down. Uh, they're not running anything. And... Um, um, on the one webinar that I was on yesterday with the um, 
um, with the, um, this is through the governor's office. Uh, they said that um, they are already preparing dormitories uh, for overflow for the hospitals, for patients. If this thing gets out of hand, which it could very easily do, uh, they're going to be transferring patients uh, who have this into the dormitories in colleges. And they're going to be using dormitories in the colleges for um, overflow patients. And I mean, this thing, um, you know, they're getting ready for a super uh, bad time. And because we're, we're just on the verge of this thing. We aren't even anywhere near being halfway through it yet. Even though they say, well, it's going to be 14 days, I think it's going to be longer. I really do. Uh, I'm looking right now at, at probably eight weeks before we're back to normal again. So uh, we're just going to have to keep praying and, uh, and hope that uh, God will take, and, uh, take care of everything for us. I know he will because uh, he's a good God. Amen? Amen? So, all right. Abba, it's all yours. Now, <coughs> okay, now please stand. Again, there will be no handshaking time because of the coronavirus, but please stand as we turn to our course of the month. No handshaking, no handshaking, but please stand as we turn to 520. 520, please stand, 520. I just keep trusting my Lord as I walk along. Father, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for all you've done for us. Pray now that you'll um, use these offerings for your honor and your glory. We love you. We thank you for what you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you what, you know, I, um, I don't have the coronavirus, but I sure got the allergies. Oh, my soul. I was outside yesterday, and I was feeling really good, and I was getting a lot of work done outside, and I went out in the backyard, and I should never done that because all my fruit trees are in full bloom, and I'm allergic to citrus pollen. You know, you would think if somebody was allergic... You, you'd think if somebody was allergic to citrus pollen that they wouldn't have fruit trees. Amen? You know what I mean? But anyway. So, all right. Everybody got a prayer sheet? It is. I think she is on there. Rowas? Yeah, she's on here. Oh, is it? 
Okay. All right. I'll just put left knee by her name. All right. Um, anything? Uh, oh, I want to take and bring you up to speed on a couple things. Um, Joanne Tremble, uh, she's not doing real good. Uh, Carol took her to the ho uh, doctor yesterday, and um, um, she just went to her GP, or general practitioner, and um, uh, he told her, he says, you need to get to your cardiologist immediately. He says, this is not a respiratory thing that you have. It's a heart thing. And so she was going to try to get into the cardiologist as soon as she possibly could. So uh, we need to really pray for Joanne. Um, also, um, if you take and uh, remember me, um, next Wednesday, a week from today, I've got to go back in and have two more stents put in. Um, so they're going to do a heart cath, um, about four o'clock in the afternoon. And so, um, I'm not really looking too forward to that, but, <clears throat> um, also we need to take in, um, um, I, I received an email last night from, um, um, a pastor in India and, uh, they have about 300 in their church in India. And they uh, have had 200 people die in their church from this virus. 200. He said India, India is just getting hit really, really hard with it, but yet nobody's reporting it. Nobody is reporting how bad it is in India with the people dying. And uh, he said that um, of the 200, 50 of the children have no, had no, both their parents died in this. And uh, um, so the kids have had nowhere to go. And so he's opened an orphanage, orphanage and uh, he's taking care of all 50 of these kids. And uh, so um, he said the, the problem that he has is they're starting to run out of food. We can imagine with 50 kids, you know, you're not planning for it. And uh, he says food is something that's really, really getting scarce over here in India. And so we just needed, I'll tell you what, we need to pray for all churches worldwide. You know, our, our churches here in the United States are going to have a tough go of it in the next few months, mainly because the tithes and offerings are going to be down. And it's not only the churches, but it's the missionaries too. And Brother Echoes can, can uh, echo this one for me. But um, uh, I remember Jimmy Queen, he was here. Um, back in January, okay, <clears throat> um, when he was here, uh, um, they had a full schedule all the way through, I think, almost the 1st of June. And I got an email from him yesterday, and he said, Brother Storm, he says, pray for us. He says, every one of our um, uh, churches that we were supposed to be in in the next eight weeks have canceled. So he said, we have nothing to do in the next eight weeks. And uh, uh, he's not the only one in this. Uh, Brother Echoes is supposed to be in uh, Liberty down in Yuma, and uh, um, they canceled down there too. So, um, you know, this is going on. Um, there was a church in um, um, <laughs> Georgia um, Denise is telling me about it, that they were having a revival and uh, they, um, they had to cancel it because uh, they're not having church at all. And uh, um, they had church, they had Sunday morning church. They didn't have Sunday school. They had Sunday morning, no Sunday evening church. Um, Denise and Scott went to a different church <laughs> on Sunday evening. Scott says, I, I'm going to church. He says, my kids know that we're going. It doesn't matter what it is. We're going to church. And she, he says, even if we have to sit home and listen to you, we're going to church. I say, amen, that'd be fine, you know, because he says, I know that you're going to have church. That's the way my kids are brought up. Yes, yes, two-thirds, two-thirds, two yes. He said, he said the, uh, that, um, he said, I would like to send you the pictures 
of the mass graves that they're digging over here and, and just putting bodies in. And he said they, uh, they, um, the um, crematories are just over flooded with, with bodies, trying to get them cremated as fast as they possibly can. It's less than 2%. But see, you got to understand this. They do not have a president like we do. Amen. You know, they do not have a president that shut down the uh, incoming um, from, from, um, from China right away. I mean, boom, January, he says, that's it. Nobody coming in from China, period. And then he started shutting off Italy. He started shutting off uh, the U.K. He started shutting off. Now they've got the border to Canada shut off. Um, so, you know, we have a very wise, very, very wise president. And uh, he, is, he is doing what I feel is the best job a president could do under the situation. You know, I look at the H1N1 that we had, and we had uh, 300,000, no, 300, 360,000 people in the hospital. In fact, the hospitals were so overrun that they had nowhere to go with people. I mean, it was just, it was phenomenal. That was the N1H1, and they had 18,000, over 18,000 people died in the United States from the, uh, and guess who was president then? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, um, on another note, I, I received an a email from Brother Mann. They were going to go back to Zimbabwe next week. They were going back on another trip over to Zimbabwe. They had everything all ready to go. They had their visas. They had everything all set up to go. They were going to be over there for a month and uh, drill two more wells and put up two more buildings over in Zimbabwe, and it got canceled. They cannot go. Zimbabwe will not, or actually the United States will not let them leave now uh, and head over there because of the amount of uh, cro uh, coronavirus that's over there. Um, also, on another note, uh, I've never, in all the time I've been with ACE, I've never seen them cancel ISC, internationals. They've canceled ISC for this year. And uh, they said that um, uh, they're going to have it in Thailand. And the Thailand, um, the Thais said that they could not uh, come in and um, that um, they shut their borders completely to any foreigners coming in. And so um, they said it would be too big of a risk for their people having kids come in from all over the world, you know, and that's what it would have been. So uh, anyway, that's uh, kind of where we are on this whole thing. And that we just need to really, really pray for for um, you know, all churches, um, missionaries, and everybody. So let's go Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for the opportunity of coming into your presence. Father, we just pray now that you guide and direct us. We know that um, all things are possible through you. And Father, we just pray for this uh, virus that's worldwide now. We know that you've done it for a purpose, and we don't know exactly what the purpose is, but I believe it is to turn people's eyes to you. Help us, I pray, as Christians, that we will be uh, vigilant and be able to talk to more people about you and, and uh, show them that you are the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man cometh unto the Father but by you. Father, we just pray for our faith promise missions. We pray for our church finances now, and we know it's going to be kind of tough going for the next uh, couple months. We just pray, Lord, that you take and help us to be able to make our financial obligation. Pray for the food bank. <clears throat> pray for our government leaders to... Uh, uh, make really good godly decisions. We thank you for the decisions that have already been made. We just pray now that you continue to help them to make good decisions. We pray for the O'Briens and uh, Jimmy and Deborah and, and uh, Kyle, and we pray for uh, Ricky, and we pray for Kristen, and we pray also for uh, Daniel uh, for guidance, Lord. We pray for Ro and, and uh, for her for guidance and 
And Father, we pray for Dolly, and, and we pray also for <clears throat> Ariana and, and uh, Randy um, Barker, Lord, Baker, Lord. We just pray for all these. We pray, Lord, that they might take and look to you for their guidance and all that they do and say. Father, we know that many times we try to do things on our own. We just pray, Lord, that you take and uh, help them to look to you for their guidance. And Father, we just pray for uh, Kathy and Cheyenne and, and uh, Faith and their pregnancies now. We just pray that uh, uh, they be able to carry their children and, uh, for full term and, and have healthy children that they can raise in the nurture and after nutrition of you. And Father, we pray for the echoes and their, their automobile situation. We pray that you might uh, be able to get their other vehicle back for them. And Father, we pray for the uh, students as they're away from us now. We just pray, Lord, that you take and keep them safe and out of harm's way. And we pray that uh, they'll come back to school and they'll have a good attitude and want to learn a lot. And pray for Chuck, Lord, and um, uh, for wisdom for him, for the knowledge of the Bible. And Father, we pray for the many, 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 many churches all over the world. Um, there's so many churches right now that are having a lot of problems, not only financially, but with with people who are getting sick and, and who can't come to church, Lord, because of their, their physical condition. We just pray, Lord, that you'd be with these churches, help them, guide them, be with the pastors, uh, give them the wisdom that they need as they uh, carry the torch, Lord. And we just pray for all of these churches, Lord, that they would uh, uh, be able to continue on and that uh, your word would go throughout the whole world. And Father, we can't praise you enough for all that you've done in this church for the answer to prayer and the people that come and the lives that you've changed. And, Father, the, the healing that we've seen happen in this church. And, Father, we thank you for the ones that were saved this last week. And, Father, we just uh, thank you for Dana. We, we just miss him so much. We know that it, uh, it's best for him to stay away right now. But, uh, Father, we just uh, thank you so much for him. And, Father, we just pray for our missionaries all over the world. We pray for the Deans, we pray for the Novatos, we pray for Gary and Nancy and the Yearlings, and pray for the McDaniels, and we pray for uh, the Wrights, we pray for um, uh, the Sanders, and we also pray for the Radcliffe's, Lord. And Father, we know that they're, they're in the same predicament, so to speak, as we are. Some are even worse play, uh, um, condition than we are. We just pray, Lord, for them. We pray that you'd put a hedge of protection around them. And Father, we pray for the many illnesses we have tonight pray for chuck thomas's dad and his diabetes and and his knee surgery and we pray for um uh, chuck and his knee and his wrist and we pray for ryan and carl and we pray for chuck hart and his cancer and we pray for jasmine and father we know that cancer is a bad thing but yet we know that you can take and heal and we just pray tonight you might reach down and heal them we pray also for rolls uh knee lord we just pray that you take and uh, be with her Father, we pray for Brenda and her blindness. We pray also for Cynthia and her neuropathy and pray for Scarlett and um, her health problems and Nick's wife and her back. And we just pray also for uh, David Moore and as he's in this coma. Pray for Shane uh, Eldridge and, and his GBS. And we pray for Darlene and uh, the brain damage that he, uh, she has and Christina and her high blood pressure and, and Lauren Allen and his ABS. And we pray also for... Miss Echoes, Lord, we just pray that you'll keep her healthy through all of this, and we love her so much. We just pray, Lord, that you'd uh, uh, keep her feeling well. We pray also for Brother Dawson as he's going to have this upcoming surgery, and we pray for uh, Debbie Dalton and, and uh, the liver problem that she's having. We pray also for, for Tuck's back, Lord. We just pray that you'd take the pain away from him. And pray for Joanne, Lord, and we just pray that you'd be with the doctors to know exactly what they need to do and, and that uh, they can get her back on the road to recovery again. And we pray for um, um, myself uh, in this uh, procedure I'm have done next Wednesday that you'll guide and direct. And Father, we just think of the men in need you, uh, to know you as their personal Savior. We pray for food bank workers. We pray for the people who come to food bank. We pray for the unsaved uh, relatives we have. And Father, we pray for Ray Thomas. We pray for Jasmine and, and Deborah Dalton. We pray also for Ricky, Lord, and we pray for Josh Myers and Joshua. We pray also for um, Richard and, and Fred. And Father, we pray also for James and Nicole. And Father, we pray for all these. We just pray that someone somehow can come in to their life and show them how they need to come to know you as their personal Savior. We pray also for 
our military all over the world, Lord. We just pray that you take and guide and direct them, be with them. I just pray that you'd uh, uh, keep them out of harm's way. And Father, we just pray now especially that um, none of them would get this virus. And Father, we just thank you so much for loving us. Pray now that you'll guide and direct in everything that's said and done here tonight, that we might get something out of this that we can use in our own life. And we'll give you the praise and thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn your Bibles to the um, Isaiah chapter 41. Um, what's that? Next Wednesday. Week from today. Turn your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. You know, with everything going on, uh, with um, this virus that's uh, going on and, and everything else, um, I've been in Walmart a couple of times, and, uh, um, you know, you can see that people are fearful. People are fearful of the unknown. And uh, um, tonight I want to talk to you a little bit about fear, about fear. Um, you know, <clears throat> In uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, it says, <clears throat> Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will, I will help thee. Yea, I will hold thee with the right hand of my fellowship, of my righteousness, I mean. Um, on July 1st, 1994, that verse came real to my life when we were involved in our plane crash. I had never memorized the verse. I had never thought of the verse. I had never done anything. But as I was laying on the ground, looking up and seeing the clouds pass over me, I said, Lord, I'm ready to come home. And I thought I was going to die. I thought I was going to go home right then and there. And then all of a sudden, I heard an audible voice in my head say, Fear not, for I am with thee. I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with my right hand of righteousness. And, you know, from that time on, I never again ever was fearful of anything because I knew that God was with me. You know, <clears throat> with what's happening in the world today, you know, there are um, many who are fearful of what this virus can do and may end up doing to them or their loved ones or uh, someone else. And you know, all of the panic buying of food and water and shells and everything else, people are very fearful right now. I was in uh, Kell Ranch on Monday. I thought, well, I'll just stop in and pick up some uh, um, nine millimeter shells. I had some shells to shoot on Saturday. I went in there and there was not a shell on the shelf. They were completely sold out. In fact, in their gun case, they only had five guns left in their whole gun case and all the rifles and shotguns were sold out. I mean, it was just unbelievable. I said to this guy, I said, man, alive, what happened to everything? He says, you have no idea. He says, from Friday until now, he says, all of this is gone. And him and I were talking over by one of the uh, aisles and I said to him, I said, well, I said, what did you have down here? I said, you guys don't have toilet paper, do you? And he started laughing. And he goes, no. He says, he says this here was all of our survival food. He says, no kidding. He says, this stuff went out of here like water. He says, it was unbelievable. I mean, people were coming in with carts, load, just loading it, taking their arm and just going right down the aisle. And whatever that came in the cart came in the cart. And out the door they went with it. But um, he says, I've never seen anything like this in all my life. He said, on Thursday, they had two pallets, two pallets of shotgun shells. They had none left. And uh, so, I mean, you know, it, it, the way people are buying is just, you know, out of this world. Um, you know, the local stores cannot keep up. They just can't. And, uh, um, you know, there's not... <clears throat> You know, there's lots of things that we can be afraid of in life. You know, uh, all along the pathway of human history, man has been afraid. In fact, the first instance that we see of, of people being afraid is in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 10. 
and we know what that was. That was the fall of man, and, and uh, uh, um, Adam said that we were afraid when we heard your voice uh, in, the, in, the, um, in the garden. And then there was others like uh, um, Jacob in Genesis chapter 31, 31, and Daniel chapter um, uh, 8, verse 17, and, and Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 2. And, and then there was the foolish servant in Matthew 25, 25, uh, when he said, And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Um, lo, here thou hast that is thine. You know, God does not want us to be fearful, but to depend on him. You know, he doesn't want us to be afraid. You know, we shouldn't be afraid because we, greater is he that is in, in us than he that is in the world. Now, if you go through the Bible, you'll find 365 times this. Do not be afraid or be courageous. 365 times. Why do you think there's 365 times that is in the Bible? One for every day of the year. We need to realize that we should not be afraid. We shouldn't be afraid. You know, we have a God that's going to take care of everything for us. You know, I want to look at a, just a few uh, uh, things tonight because I feel that each of us suffer from time to die, time with fear. I think all of us sometimes are afraid of something. You know, I get up in the morning and my little dog's standing there. I don't know if she's going to bite me in the nose or not, but you know what I mean? So, um, but no, I'm not afraid of her. But, you know, but I want to look at the cause of fear. Uh, there are many causes of fear, and I have, I've listed just a few here tonight because we don't have uh, a lot of time, but uh, sin is the first cause of fear. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 10, it says, And I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Fear is the tax that um, conscience pays on guilt. Let me read that again. Fear is the tax that conscience pays on guilt. You know, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden... They realized that they had did something against what God had told them, and they were afraid. Now, um, they had sweet fellowship with God all the time, didn't they? In the cool of the day. He had come down, he'd walk with them in the cool of the day in the garden, and they had sweet fellowship with him. You know, um, they, knew by the, they knew the power of God. After all, everything was created by God. They were created by God. They were not born they were created, and they knew God's power. God had told them that in the day that they took of that tree, though, what was going to happen? They would surely die. They would I don't know if they'd ever seen death before. They didn't even know what death was. But God said, in the day that you take of that tree, you will surely die. Die. Now, that would make me enough to be afraid of. Amen? You know, <clears throat> when Achan sinned by taking the gold and silver and the Babylonian garment from the city of, of Jericho, he became afraid. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was Achan, and I went and I took something that I shouldn't have taken, and I hid it in the ground in my tent and covered it up with rugs and everything else, and all of a sudden, Moses came to me and he says, What did you do? I think I would become a little afraid, don't you? After all, there was two million people that he could have accused, but he didn't. He accused one man, and that was Achan. And he became very afraid. He became not only afraid for himself, but he became afraid for his family. He became afraid. Afraid for his relatives. You know, when we sin, we become afraid someone is going to find out what we did. We'll try to hide our sin. You know, I love little kids. I do. I love little kids a lot. Where's Bentley? Is he sleeping? Good. I'm glad. Because I'm going to pick on him. You know, um, 
they were over our house. And uh, um, Mrs. Storm had told him that he could have some M&Ms, package of M&Ms. But she says, only take one. And he says, okay. So he took one and gave one to Bailey, and Bailey ate hers, and he ate his. Well, <clears throat> the next day, she went and she found packages of empty M&Ms stuck underneath the chair. Now, why were those empty ones stuck underneath the chair? Because he knew he wasn't supposed to do them. He had disobeyed, and he was afraid he was going to get caught. You know, listen, isn't that the way we are with sin? Don't all of a sudden, when we sin, we go, Oh, no, somebody's going to find out about it. I need to cover it up. After all, look what David did with Bathsheba. I mean, you know, somebody's got, she's pregnant. Uh-oh, Uriah is at war. I got to get him home so him and her can get together so that, guess what? It's not mine. But Uriah didn't do that, did he? So David had to have him killed so that his sin wasn't found out. But yet it still was. You know, <clears throat> we become afraid of God when we sin, don't we? We, be, we become afraid, just like Adam and Eve did, of what God's going to do to us because of our sin. There's also a lack of faith causes fear. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, it says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were formed by the word of God, so that things that were seen were not made of things which do appear. You know, we become afraid because we do not feel anyone is looking out for our best interest. You know, we become afraid because we don't feel that the government is doing enough for this virus that's going around. We become afraid because we hear of things that are going on in other countries, and we think to ourselves, oh, this could happen here. We're all going to die. We become afraid because we don't have the courage to believe Something can be taken care of. You know, <laughs> um, men fear each other when they have not faith in each other. You know, the same is true with our relationship to God. Fear comes when we do not have the faith in God that we should. In Isaiah chapter 35, verse 4, it says, To them that are of a fearful heart. Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God, with a recompense. He will come and save you. You know, men do not want to depend on God because they can't see Him. However, God has promised that He will take care of us. He's the one who's going to have the victory in this. Even though President Trump says, well, we're going to be victorious over this whole thing. We're not going to be victorious over it. God is. You know, he made a statement yesterday, and boy, I'll tell you what, he got crucified for it. He says, the only way we're going to get through this thing is prayer. That's the only way we're going to get through it is prayer. I'm going, amen. amen. You know, <clears throat> not believing something will happen will cause Fear, You know, not believing that we can get through this virus can cause a lot of fear. You know, um, in Genesis chapter 24, verse 15, it says this, And it came to pass before he had done speaking, that behold, Rebekah came out with her pitcher upon her shoulders. Now, I don't believe that Abraham's uh, servant believed that his prayer would get answered that quickly. Do you? Do you believe that? I mean, here it was, Abraham says, okay, I want you to go find a wife for my son. And I don't want you to come back until you do. So his servant comes to this well. And he's sitting there, and he's going, oh, Lord, help me to be speedy about this. Please help me to find a wife for Isaac. All of a sudden, here comes Rebekah down to the well. He's not even done praying yet. He's not even done praying. All of a sudden, he looks up and he goes, 
I can't believe it. I ain't even done praying and God answered my prayer already. Woo! Hey, I'll tell you what, we have a good God. You know, he knows what we need and he's going to answer our prayers before we even ask sometimes. You know, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 26, it says, And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose, and he rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. You know, we know the story. They were out in the boat. The boat was taken on water. There was a huge storm. Where was Jesus? He was down in the boat sleeping. All of a sudden, they come down. They go, Hey, wake up. Don't you care that we're going to die? We're going to drown? He goes up, he looks around outside, and he goes, peace be still. Boom, just like that, everything quit. Why were they fearful? You know, I don't know if I would have been fearful. Yeah, I would have been. After all, who was on that boat? Peter, James, John, and Andrew. They were all fishermen. They had been out in storms like that before. They knew of people who had sunk and drowned. They were out in the middle of the sea. All of a sudden, this wind comes up, and they're going, you know what? It's dark out. It's night. I can't see land. I don't know which way I should swim, which would be closer to land. I became fearful one time. Flying. I was flying over Lake Michigan. I was going from Michigan to Wisconsin in my Cessna 172. And I was flying at 6,000 feet. I got up just as high as I could go. I could, went up, oh no, I take that back. I was up at 9,000 feet. 9,000 feet coming across Lake Michigan. Now there is point in Lake Michigan that you get to it doesn't matter how high you are, you're not going to get back to land. You just aren't. There's no way. When you get to this certain point, there is no way you're going to make it either way to land. And you have to fly almost 25 miles before you would get to a point where you could possibly make land on the other side. And I got to that point, And you know, when I got to that point, all of a sudden, I started hearing really funny sounds in my motor. You know what I mean? I mean, I heard noises I'd never heard before. And I'm going, oh, Lord, just help me make it. Help me make it all the way across. You know, hey, you become fearful. Why? Because you don't have any control over it. There's no way that if the airplane would have went down, there's no way I could have done anything about it. You know, we need to have faith that God can do anything but fail. You know, if we could only have that faith, we'd make through a, a lot of things. You know, many times we did not have enough faith believing that God can get us out of the things that we're going through. You know, we feel man will override whatever is happening in our lives. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6, it says, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. You know, we just need faith that God is going to take and overcome everything that comes into our lives. We need to have that faith. But yet we don't. But yet we don't. The unknown causes fear. The unknown also causes fear. Not knowing what is ahead of us causes fear. That's exactly what's going on today. People have no idea what this virus is going to do down the road. Not even the experts know what's going to happen. Now, they've been getting all these reports out of China how this curve went way up and now it's coming back down again. But what they found out today is that the data that they're getting out of China is false. Oh, somebody lying? Unbelievable, isn't it? Listen, many times 
we need to realize that the unknown will cause us to have fear. You know, what's going to happen with the rest of the school year? Are we going to be able to have school the rest of the school year? Are you going to be able to graduate? Are you going to be able to graduate? Are you going to get your work done so you have enough credits? You know, this is all unknown. It's unknown. You know, what happens if America is overthrown by another nation? You know, what will my children be when they grow up? What will happen when I get to heaven? What heaven what's heaven going to be like? You know, I, where will I spend eternity if I were to die right now? What will happen to my car or house if I can't pay for the mortgage? You know, these are things that are unknown. Um, there's a lot of unknowns which can cause us to have fear of the future. Not knowing what tomorrow will bring can cause us to fear the unknown. You know, there are many who are in hospitals today who do not feel they may be here tomorrow. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, it says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Another fear is what is, what is death going to be like? Nobody knows what death is going to be like until you're there. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 14 to 17, it says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so also, them also <clears throat> which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. But the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we, or so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wow, what a day that's going to be. That's the rapture of the church. That's the day that there's a trumpet sound, there's a call, come up hither. And when a twinkling of an eye, we're gone. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that. I'm not fearful for that part, amen? I'm not fearful to meet the Lord in the air. I'm looking forward to that time. I'm looking forward to that. But one of the greatest fears a person has is death, unknown. The unknown of of what it's going to be like when you close your eyes for the last time. You know, we have the assurance, if we're saved, what is going to happen to us. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 6 to 8, it says, Therefore we are always confident, knowing that once we are uh, at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing, rather, to be absent from from the body, and to be present with the Lord. If we know the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we should be looking forward to what's coming, not fearful of what's coming. Amen? Amen. You know, <clears throat> I'm not afraid of dying. I'm not afraid of getting this virus and dying. I'm not, and believe me, I am a frail person. Amen? Mrs. Echoes is a frail person, just like me. My wife is a frail person. But you know, I'm not afraid of dying. I'm not. Because what's across Jordan is better than what we have now. Listen, the absence of love brings fear. The absence of love brings fear. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 17 and 18, it says, Wherein is our love made perfect, 
that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in, the wor in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts us out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Whoa! Hatred causes fear in the heart. You know, <clears throat> when we do not feel people love us, we become afraid what will be the outcome of our lives if something would actually happen to us. You know, the older I get, the more I become fearful of what will happen to me if my wife dies and I'm here all alone. You know, I do. I, 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 it's something that I, I think about once in a while. You know, what, what will happen to me? What will happen to her if I go first? You know, we don't have any family here. We don't have... But, you know, I get to thinking of my church family. And I think to myself, you know what? What have I got to worry about? God always supplies for us. You would be so gift, difficult to go through life not knowing if you are loved or not. You know, having the emptiness in your life, feeling no one loves you, and fearing what the future without love will bring. You know, listen, once we've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, we don't have to worry about love anymore because we have a friend that's sick as what? Closer than a brother. That's right. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sicketh closer than a brother. Hebrews 13, 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Listen. Why do we have to worry about friends when we have the Lord? I always think of the song, What a friend we have in Jesus, all of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. You know, what we need to realize is this, is that we've got friends, and the number one friend we have is the Lord Jesus Christ. The cause of fear. This may be the greatest curse to man. Fear dishonors God because it discredits him. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 31, it says, And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Do you think Peter said, Uh-oh, when he's going down? After all, wasn't he real brave and got out of the boat and started walking towards Jesus as he was walking on the water? And then all of a sudden he felt the water slapping around his ankles and he's going, oh, oh. And he started to sink. What did he say? Lord, save me. Jesus reached down, took his hand, put him up on the boat. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what. That's a friend. Why worry when we can pray? You know, fear produces weakness. In Joshua chapter 7, verse 5, it says, And the men of Ai smote them, thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate, even unto uh, uh, Shishbram, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore, the hearts of the people melted and became as water. The people became afraid and ran for their lives. Listen, they just had a great victory, didn't they? Didn't they just have a great victory? Didn't they? After all, they had just went all the way through Jericho. You know what I mean? They took care of Jericho. 
I mean, they did not lose one person in Jericho other than Jericho. Not one of them. None of the Israelites died. Now they went to Ai. 36 of them died. Ai was just a small little town. Just a small little town. They lost 36 men. 36 men didn't come back from the battle. And as these people were dropping, they took off and they ran because they were afraid of what was going on. Even Joshua was afraid. You know, a soldier in battle is at his weakest time when he is afraid. He's at his weakest time when he's afraid. You know, over and over again, God tells us to be strong and of good courage. Fear encourages the devil. It helps him to defeat us. Fear disqualifies us for service. Did you know that? Judges chapter 7, verse 3. Now therefore, go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying... Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned the people, 22,000, and there remained 10,000. Listen, fear will paralyze our efforts. Fear will paralyze our efforts. Fear <clears throat> destroys our influence. How can we help others? If we are captured with fear. Amen? How can we help somebody if we're fearful? Fear produces bondage. Hebrews 2.15 And delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Fear destroys and tears down. Psalms 53.5 there, um, there were they... In great fear, where no fear was. For God has scattered the bones of him that encamp against thee. Thou hast put them into shame, because God hath despised them. It does not build a person up. Fear tears a person down and makes us feel there is no hope, no help, and no home. But what cures fear? What cures fear? If, we, if you fear loneliness, God says, I will be with thee. Isaiah 41.10 <clears throat> Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Don't be lonely. God is with you and will help you get through any situation. If you feel helpless, God says, I am thy God. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. He's all-powerful, all-knowing, all-wise, all-sufficient. How can we feel helpless when we realize the great God that we serve? You cannot be helpless when we have the Lord Jesus Christ on our side and He's going to fight for us. You know, there, there are many who are fe feeling helpless helpless, not knowing what this virus is going to do. They do. They feel totally helpless, not knowing what's ahead of them. But what if we fear temptation? God says, I will strengthen thee. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee. With the right hand of my righteousness. God will give us all the strength that we need to get through all of our temptations. You know, when Satan tempted Jesus, think about this for a minute. Was Jesus hungry? He had been in the wilderness how many days and nights? 40 days and 40 nights. 
You know, I would have some hunger cramps by then, you know that? In fact, my belly button may be shaking hands with my backbone, amen? <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, he was hungry. Satan says to him, if you be the son of God, cause these stones to be turned into bread. Right? All of a sudden, he had a hunger pain like you couldn't believe. What did he do? Man cannot live by bread alone. By every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Whoa! Whoa! I bet that hunger pain went right away. You know, we need to realize that he fought Satan off with what? Yeah! God's word. Listen, that's why we need to hide God's word in our heart that we may not sin against him. That's why we need to read this Bible every single day. If you want to get rid of fear, read this book. Do you have fear of failure? God says, I'll help thee. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Don't let life's responsibilities crush you. God can help. You know, there's an awful lot of people right now who are fearing financial failure. You know, look what the stock market has done in the last week. It has taken a nosedive like you would not believe. President Trump's standing up there and he says, hang on guys, don't go doing stupid investments. Don't sell right now. Invest if you can't, you know, I read something the other day and it says, you know, this is a conservative's time of life. The stocks are down, you can buy cheap. Because they are going to come back, and when they come back, they're going to come roaring back like a jet plane. Now's the time to buy if you have money to, to uh, uh, put in the stock market. You know, <clears throat> don't be afraid of failure because God is going to help us. You know, are you fear of death? I will uphold thee. Fear thou not, for I am, with, I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Do you know that there is no dark valley as long as we're with the Lord? Psalms chapter 23 and verse 4 says this, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. As long as we know the Lord, we don't have to be afraid of death. Why? Because he's with us. He's with us. You know, the fear of God is a cure for all of our fears. Did you know that? The fear of God I just preached the message this last Sunday on the fear of God. Psalms, uh, Psalms 19, verse 9, it says, The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Psalms 8, 13 says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and ignorancy, and the evil way, and the foreign mouth do I hate. Listen, we saw what causes fear. We saw the curse of fear. And now we've learned how to get rid of fear or the cure of fear. If you have fears in your life, give your fears to the Lord. Give your fears to the Lord. We shouldn't be fearful of anything. If you do not know him, you need to find him tonight. You need to know 100% that if you were to die right now, you'd spend eternity in heaven. Amen? He can't help someone he doesn't know. It's that easy. 
You know, what, what we're going through right now <laughs> is nothing compared to what we have ahead of us in heaven. Fear thou not. Just keep looking up. This little thing that we're going through now is nothing compared to what the tribulation is going to be like. You think this is bad, just be glad we're not going to go through the tribulation and have seven years of this stuff. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for all you've done for us. I pray now that you'll guide and direct us to go our various ways. We love you so much. We thank you so much for the people of this church. Thank you for those who come so faithfully. And we, we thank you for the ones who can't come right now because of, of you know, their, their physical uh, being. And we just pray, Lord, that you'd help them, guide them. Father, we love everybody. We just uh, pray that if they need help in any way, that we're here for them. We just thank you so much for loving us. We pray now that you'll guide and direct in all that we do and say. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you are all dismissed.